Thank you very, very much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Good morning, welcome back to my channel, it's Emma. How you doing? Today, it's a bit late for this video, but not really because today is June 11th and I've only read one book so far this month. And that's because I've just been late to the party, much more than fashionably of like getting together what I want to read for the month, how I want to read, what I want to include in my own life, in my own space, in my own mindset, specifically through the lens of literature. And so today I'm gonna pick out those books because I haven't done that yet. I've kind of just been relaxed and taking in books very slowly. The only book I finished this month is Miyazaki World, which is a nonfiction all about Hayao Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli, which was fantastic. Um, and I think I want to use that book as kind of the starting point for the magic and the comfort and the mindset that I want to get into in June. And you guys did say you would like a planning video. So yeah, here it is. I'm going to take you through what I kind of want to read this month, the genres, the bookshelves the book clubs and everything that i want to read this month so without further ado i do have a couple books i'm technically already in the middle of so i will tell you those first and as well please feel free always to join along and read anything you want and it's always fun to talk to you guys in the comments of vlogs and then wrap ups and stuff like that so let's get into the video if i can interspersed with the huge construction noise that my building has refused to stop doing since january 25th so Let's get started. All right, so here's my little stack of books that I am currently reading. I'm gonna take you through, I think, a couple of the book club picks, both for the Dark Academics, as well as the Dickens, no, Tolstoy, Dickens versus Tolstoy. Oh my God, why don't I know the name of my own book club? The Dickens versus Tolstoy book club, um, both picks that I'm really, really excited about, as well as what I'm currently reading, but just haven't finished yet because I'm having too good a time in the books and I'm reading them so slowly. So the first one for the Dickens versus Tolstoy, this is our pick for June. We're going to be reading Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. I'm currently that much of the way through and as you can see I am loving this. Carolyn actually gifted me this copy which is perfect. It's the beautiful Penguin English Library edition um, and as of today I'm 153 pages through. I'm loving this. This time for the debate I will be again on Tolstoy's side so I need to kind of find things that I don't think are super powerful or strong in this volume which is really hard because I'm really really loving it so far. So if you would like to join in with us please feel free but if you don't know what this is about we are following young Oliver Twist when this novel begins. His mother gives birth to him and promptly dies and so he is left in the care of an orphanage or a parish house where he is brought up in very unsanitary, unhealthy, and cruel conditions. From there, his life seemingly gets worse because at the age of, I think, 11 or 12, he is pawned off and sold to a coffin maker. From there, you follow him basically running into trials and tribulations of bad luck, which is abounding around every corner. He eventually makes his way to London. And from there, he gets swept into this den of thieves, um, which I'm kind of just at the part now, but it is remarkable. It is incredible. There's so many, um, events and so many ideas that I'm following in here with my tabs, which I will explain, of course, in my Oliver Twist uh, vlog because there will be a whole vlog for this one. And as well, um, I know you guys have been asking me for too long to do an annotation video, like a proper one. So I will get my butt on that very soon as well. So anyway, that is the first read and I am loving it. I'm loving it. I also love this copy. Oh, Gorgeous. All right, so the Dark Academics book is actually on my shelf, so we'll go there in a few minutes and grab some things that um, I need to read this month or want to read or just want to fill my life up, you know what I mean? Like reading has just been so good recently and especially because I've just been reading a lot of books really slowly, like these next two. So this first one is Sailor Moon volume two. I'm actually almost done this. Can we just take a second to look at my bookmark? Oh my gosh. I bought Sailor Moon, I think, in literally like September, but I was talking about this in my last vlog that I just haven't been ready to pick it up because I haven't been ready to feel all the feelings that it's gonna give me. But as you can see, I'm just, I'm in the Sailor Moon mindset. Just serotonin abounds there and I'm loving it. So volume two, I'm honestly even loving this more than volume one. This is definitely gonna be five stars. I just, it's incredible. It's making me so happy. So I am almost done this one, unfortunately, but it's just been the best, best thing ever recently in my life. And I've been loving 
reading this so so much so that is another one i should be done this pretty soon so then that will be i probably like my second read for june but just so much fun honestly and it's just yeah it's making me so smiley every single time i pick it up so this next book i took the dust jacket off but uh i'm also almost done that one this is anna green gables by l m montgomery this copy i found at a thrift store um a long time ago maybe even a couple years ago but i just never picked it up because once again i didn't think i was ready for this but um i am listening to this one via audiobook which is so good the audiobook narrator i don't know who she is but she is doing a fantastic job so thank you whoever she is maybe i'll let you know in a vlog or something but um yeah i'm currently 258 pages through i'm just it's just meh. It's so good. It's so, so good. It's making me so happy once again. This is perfect for this time of year as well because it's so magical. L.M. Montgomery's nature writing is beautiful, gorgeous. It's just making me see the world differently. Like Anne Shirley is a whole other category of human being and sometimes she's a little annoying i'm not gonna lie but mostly she is a dream she is an enchantment she is a walking ghost of everything that is good in the world and just like being on prince edward island um is beautiful i would love to go there i would love to go out east eventually so that is anne of green gables i'm loving it never want it to end i know there's more books i can pick up of course um but just wonderful. Oh my gosh, I would highly suggest picking this up. I know so many of you guys have already read this and I think so many of you have been telling me that's one of your favorite books of all time, which I now understand. I do understand. So this is gorgeous. And this next book, uh, I have not stepped into it properly. I actually just started this last night. I only read the introduction, but um, this is like my fifth, it's either like the fifth, the sixth, or the seventh reread of it, and that is Rilke's Book of Hours, also known as Love Poems to God. I actually picked this one up because I'm going to be buddy reading it with a few of my friends, um, who you all know. I'm reading this with Carolyn, Lucy, and Mary, and I think we're going to be starting this very soon, so I just got to up to the first poem, which I haven't read yet. Um, this copy, one of my friends also got me, one of my best friends got me from a thrift store because she knows I collect Rilke, so also a very special copy, but I haven't read this particular edition, although I have read this translation because I also have it in like their anniversary edition, which is really nice, but this is the copy I think I'm going to fully annotate because my other edition of it just has like a few sprinkled thoughts here and there because I read that pretty early on in my Rilke journey thing, so this one I think I'm going to do a proper you know, go through of every single poem, which should be really, really cool. Um, and I think at this point, now that I'm returning to it, it will hit just a lot deeper resonance with me as well now that I'm a bit older and I've read a lot more of Rilke, I've read a lot more things, so I'm really looking forward to that. That is this little stack of goodness, so let's move it to the bookshelves and find some new things. All right, so the book pick for the Dark Academics book club is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. The way that we're doing it now with the Dark Academics, we're actually going to be reading one book over two months just so we have more time, it's more relaxed, and you can just read it at probably a more relaxed pace. Right, so The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. For the dark academics as well, we have decided that each um, host, whoever's hosting the live show, is gonna pick the book. So you'll get to know kind of our taste better and what we're interested in reading. So The Goldfinch is Kira's pick, which I'm really excited about. Um, I have read The Secret History years ago, but I'm really not too sure what this mammoth um, book is about, other than I think we're following this man who becomes a little bit bedraggled and sunken into to kind of the same world as Oliver Twist, I want to say. So we're following a 13-year-old boy named Theo and his mother dies in the same accident that he survives and then we follow him growing up. But then as he gets older, he descends into a criminal underworld where something has to do with a painting of a goldfinch. I think I'm going to try picking up the audiobook for this one, especially since it's also quite long, but um, I think it'll be interesting to read something by Donna Tartt as well that's not the secret history. So this is going to be our book for June and July. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to start it this month, but I might because it is so chunky. So I will let you know in a vlog, of course, but yes, this is the other book club pick. All right. So for all of the book picks that I've been picking up recently, I've been wanting somewhere to kind of store all of my inspiration, my quotes, what I've been thinking of them, my reviews and stuff. So the Lunar Library, aka the website I'm designing with Squarespace is coming along really nicely. 
I'm finding places to store my quotes that I'm loving at the minute. I love the inspiration that Squarespace gives you as well while you're designing. So if you'd like to design your own, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Emmy to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So because the weather is getting warmer and things are a lot hotter and it's summer, I definitely have a few genres that I love reading more of in the summer um, than in any other season and those are sci-fi. I love reading science fiction in the summer as well as kind of Mil Miller, <laughs> I try to say mystery and thriller, thriller or mystery or horror or something like that. I don't read a lot of thrillers but if I do I find I'm more apt to pick them up in the summer so um, yeah and then the third one is romance so we're gonna see if there's any romance on my shelf that I can maybe find an audiobook for or if there's any sci-fi that I want to pick up or thrillers because that's kind of what I want to read in the summer. We're gonna start with romance. Um, my romance shelf is really sad. It's really sad. I need to revamp it up but I also have some audiobooks that we'll go through of course like in a few minutes. So um, the newest edition is Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon which sounds like it would be a fantastic um audiobook to listen to especially in the summer it's nice and short and sweet and it's about dancing and love um i did get this one from book of the month so that would be fun as well because then i could let you know my thoughts on it so um i think i did see the audiobook for this one but from what i saw the hold list was ridiculously long so um i'll see we'll see about it we'll see about it but the other option that i have is of course Bee Tree by emily henry i actually just lent this out to my grandma and she enjoyed it, so I guess that's a good sign, but I got this for my birthday last year from one of my best friends, and I haven't picked it up because I was waiting until summer, of course, even though my birthday's in July, so I guess I was waiting another year to read it, but um, I do have this audiobook on hold, so it all depends if it just comes in, but this one is definitely probably um, the physical book, at least, for romance that is the most likely. So this one is about Augustus and January, um, and they're both authors, and they're staying at the same beach house for the summer, and then they kind of get writer's blog, so they swap manuscripts with each other, um, except they're polar opposites, and then, of course, a romance, I think, blossoms, so... Um, we shall see if the audiobook gets in, but that is the option. Okay, I just checked on Libby and Audible as well, and I do have some other romance options, which I'm excited about. So at the minute, I have in The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang, which I've just heard everyone talking about recently, which makes me quite excited to pick it up. It's not super long. It's contemporary adult romance, and I think it would just be fun because I am trying to expand my romance horizons, although I am much more likely to gravitate towards fantasy romance in which case i have a lot of books and a lot of series i could pick up and i think we might do that although i'll probably pick up the kiss quotient as well let's put the kiss quotient 100 on this tbr we'll try to get through it as for fantasy romance like i said i do have a couple of picks i just don't know which one to pick so maybe comment down below what you think for romance i should pick because i have a couple of series that I'm loving. So the first one is the Bargainer series by Laura Thalassa and the second book is called I think This Strange Hymn or A Strange Hymn but especially how the first one ended in this one we're following Callie who is a siren and she makes a whole bunch of deals with this fae called the Bargainer but she's never paid him back and then he reappears in her life and she has to go through paying all of her bracelety beads off but there's also like a subplot that is really interesting and so I would love to see what happens in the second one so a strange him is an option but I think we all know that I've been raving nonstop about Emma Ham because I read Heart of the Fae last month, loved it, and there is the second book called Veins of Magic, which is also on Audible, and I might also go for that one. Um, so I don't know. I don't know anymore. Yeah, so Heart of the Fae is, I think it's a duology, someone said, but it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling as well, and like Heart of the Fae and probably Veins of Magic, like that atmosphere and those vibes and that comfort as well is all I've wanted to read, so it honestly might be Veins of Magic that I pick up, or I might peruse and browse some more and the ham. I don't know. I don't know if I want to continue on. I just I think I should just stop starting series is what I'm saying <laughs> but yeah okay so those are all of the picks for romance I think for sure we're gonna try to read the kiss quotient and then either probably Mains of Magic or Strange Hymn hmm hmm 
stay tuned. Okay, as for sci-fi, I have this in right now on Libby. This is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This is also a thrifted copy that I got, I think in the fall. I have been seeing so many people talk about this when I first heard about it, just cause so many people were talking about it on booktube, but um, I've heard it's really good. Although I honestly, for some reason do not have high hopes for it, but I think I want to give this a try, even though the audiobook is like 16 hours, even though this does not look like 16 hours, but this one we're set on Mars, I believe. And we're following Darrow, whose wife is taken, his people enslaved, and he wants justice. So I believe everyone is split into colored factions and then Darrow is part of the Reds, who I believe are, are they the lowest faction? Um, the synopsis is pretty vague, but I do really want to read this because I've heard people, people seem to either really love it or really hate it based on what I've heard, so we shall see. I'm gonna put this one definitely on the TBR because I do really want to read some sci-fi this month, like I really really want to. And then the other sci-fi I know that I have or could possibly read is called Want by Cindy Pon. Um, I believe this one's set in a futuristic Taiwan and we're following some teenagers i believe this is young adult and they're trying to take down this corporation or infiltrate it but then one of our i think protagonists once he gets into the corporation who i believe makes suits or something like skin suits to protect humans from the outside world or something like that he meets the president or the company's daughter or something like that and then they form I believe a relationship so it sounds like sci-fi romance um with a little bit of romance i should say which like i honestly wish there was more of if anyone has any good like sci-fi romance books i would be very very interested but that is that one as well and yeah i just i really want to get to this one too all right so finally for the last genre mystery thriller horror suspense i do have i think three options i want to choose from um and then i don't know maybe i'll pick two but then i also because right now i'm reading physically reading sailor moon and oliver twist i know i'm going to be finishing sailor moon pretty soon and then i always like to have in another book kind of with the dickens versus tolstoy book club pick which i try to read by myself um, and which I have been succeeding at, which is really exciting. Just because if you are new here, just to explain really quickly, which first of all, there's so many new people. Hi, how are you? Um, I do have post-concussion syndrome, unfortunately, which makes reading with my own eyes very difficult because I have a lot of eye problems that resulted from the brain injury. So I want to go through all of my books because there's so many that I want to read, but it's just, it's it's hard for me to get to them all. I know, I know, I know I will, but it's just a matter of like prioritizing which ones I want to read first for myself. So... Yeah, anyway, let me show you the pics and then we're gonna go through the bookshelves. So the first one I have is Night Film by Marisha Pessel. This one I found in a little library box in my town. I've heard good things and I've heard bad things about this. I do have the audiobook, which is extremely long, but I don't know if I should listen to the audiobook because this is a pretty multimedia form book it is all about an investigator and he doesn't believe that what has been ruled as the suicide of a young girl ashley cordova who is kind of this mysterious figure who is the daughter of a film director so he goes a bit deeper and starts to uncover some things that he probably should not be uncovering um and that's all i know i'm not sure how creepy or scary or horror filled this exactly is yeah, so this is option number one. Option number two, I'm leaning towards the most, and that is Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. This one sounds really cool. It kind of gives me um, Cloverfield vibes because this is about a couple and they go to Long Island for vacation to escape the summer heat and the busyness of New York City, I believe. And so they're staying on Long Island. I believe they have like an Airbnb there or something. But then in the middle of the night, there's a knock on their door and another couple shows up um, and they say they are the owner of the Airbnb where our couple is staying. So our couple is like, well, why are you here? What are you doing? And they're like, we have to stay here with you. There's been a huge blackout in New York City. And because they're in kind of a rural area where there's no cell service, there's no anything like that. They don't know whether this is true or not. And so they kind of have to see if they trust each other, if they're safe in the house. And then it's just, it just sounds so creepy. I think this book is also gonna be very impressive. I've heard it's like pretty literary as well, which is exciting. So this is one I'm most leaning towards. However, there's another really fun one that I've been wanting to pick up. I'm not, I think it leans more towards like the comic horror genre because it's called Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. And this is all about uh, a department store that's ikea except it's not ikea because it can't be ikea so it's just 
Um, it's called something else, but Horror Store is about the employees of this IKEA store. And I believe it features mannequins and the like and stuff like that. I've never read a horror story with mannequins or set at, at a department store. So this one sounds really, really good as well as really, really funny. And just like being in a mall or a store late at night or when like all the lights are off or something just sounds like a good time. So I think unless I finish the other two or unless I really want to read night film, I think we'll put this on the back burner and then maybe I'll try to get to both of these because I'm in the mood to be freaked out a little bit. Okay, so let's go through all my books. <laughs> I've been helpless. All right, so I'm going to take you shelf by shelf pretty much, I think, and pull out books that I really want to read for myself. Um, a lot of them will probably be classics because that's what I really like reading by myself. I love going a little bit deeper into them and devising like annotation systems and writing extensively about them, which those annotations really help to do and stuff like that. So as well, because I am trying to register for classes in September very hesitantly and very cautiously, and I am pretty nervous about it again to try going back to school with, um, you know, my condition, but um, because of that, I do really want to um, kind of supplement my reading as well and try just to conquer a lot of books that are so important to the canon of English literature and not, but should be important to the canon of English literature or literature in general. Um, and one of those is definitely The Inferno because it's just so influential and Dante is such a big figure in so many works and he's featured so much. The intertextuality oozing, oozing out of these pages. So I've never read it. I've never read any part of the Divine Comedy and this one is a really beautiful copy that I found at a thrift store. It wasn't even read. Can you believe that? Um, so I think this is like first and foremost my um, priority. Let's go through the rest of them too. I'm not in the mood for Shakespeare right now, like I'm really not. <laughs> so a lot of these here we are going to be picking up for the Dickens vs. Tolstoy book club, so we're going to leave all of the Dickens on the shelf right now. Wuthering Heights doesn't scream summertime to me, but I would really, really like to reread it. I feel like this is a big one that I have not yet read. This is The Metamorphosis and Other Stories by Kafka. Um, I definitely want to get to this, like, yeah, I really, really do. So that is another big one that's on my bucket list. So I've never read Ernest Hemingway and I feel like that's another blind spot. Borges is also someone I just want to read so badly. I would take this collection really, really slowly. So yeah, okay, we're going to leave that one. There is tons on the shelf that I want to read so badly. I'm going to do it. I'm going to reread 100 so solitude. Ooh, ah, don't do it. Don't do it. I don't want to, I don't want to get into that right now because I'm not ready for it. I'm not ready. It's been over a year now since I've read it, but I'm just not ready to go back in. Like, I really want to, but I'm not ready. <laughs> um, I think Things Fall Apart, as well as Season of Migration to the North, were on here last time, but they are still hugely up there, especially Things Fall Apart, which is also a super important text, so I'm gonna leave that out too. Okay, and then for these ones, let's see. What do I want to read? This is Canadian literature. Uh, some of these as well, like I'm always thinking of what my pick for um, the Dark Academics book club is going to be. Uh, the break I have coming in on audiobook soon, but I don't know if that'll make it for this month. Okay, so just out of the classics, Inferno, Wuthering Heights, Kafka, Ernest, Borges, and <laughs> 100 Years of Solitude, uh, I think just at the moment, I'm just going to go for the first one. I'm just going to go for the first one I picked. I really, really want to read this. This is a bilingual edition, so it has the old Italian on one side and then the gorgeous translation on the other. I've heard Robert Pinsky. Um, I've heard this is a really good one, so I hope so. And it also comes with illustrations, so I will definitely be doing a whole reading vlog on this because this is also one of the big books on my kind of bucket list to read. And I, honestly, after reading War and Peace, like nothing scares me. <laughs> Nothing scares me anymore. Too powerful now that I've read War and Peace. Everything else just feels ridiculously short. Um, so this one. All right, so I have my huge stack here. I'll just run you through my final picks really quickly. I also have my reading journal um, that I need to update, but it's just been so helpful as well as like my reviews from earlier in the year to look back and see them and just to keep track of anything I need. I don't know if I'm gonna write this TBR out concretely because this month I'm just planning to take it honestly super easy and just read whatever I want, which like I always do, but May, 
um, because of the readathon and stuff, I was just trying to read a lot and I had so much fun and they were all spectacular. Um, but this stack, I'm definitely gonna take a lot slower. So let's go through them. No particular order. The sci-fi that I ended up picking was Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Um, I'm excited, but I don't, I'm honestly not expecting great things, but I hope this book dazzles me. I don't know why I'm not expecting great things. I just have a feeling I'm not gonna like it, but I hope I do. So more than what I told you in the synopsis, he infiltrates the Legendary Institute, which is a proving ground for the dominant gold caste, where the next generation of humanity's overlords struggle for power. Apparently there he's forced to compete in something. I don't know. I love a good competition. Um, this is also a debut novel, which is exciting. And I know there's like, you know, the rest of them are already out, but that is that one. That is the sci-fi. I also really do want to read Want by Cindy Pond, so I'm gonna put this on the TBR too, just because I really want to read it. it. Sounds fun. And it's also about infiltrating um, a powerful corporation or an institution or something like that. Sailor Moon, volume two. We knew it. We knew it so much. I'm gonna try, once I finish this, not to pick up volume three right away because I don't ever want this series to be over. I'm reading it for the first time and it's gorgeous. Although I might pick up another manga, but that will be a secret because like I said, I keep saying I'm doing a manga vlog. So Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens is priority numero uno. I am having the best time ever, honestly. So just so excited to be reading Dickens. Like I missed Dickens. I was loving War and Peace while I was in it, but I missed Dickens and being back with his humor. Thank you. Rilke will have some poetry this month, which I'm really, really excited about. I just, uh, I really need to dip back into lots of Rilke works that I haven't read because what I just keep doing is rereading the works I've already read because I don't ever want his work to be over in my life either. But each time you come back to it, it, it is something new. So I should just let go of that fear. But regardless, I've never buddy read The Book of Hours. So I'm really, really excited too. And I can't wait. Anne of Green Gables, another stellar, stellar pick. Just gorgeous. I already talked so much about this one, but this is such a beautiful tour through the seasons as well. And it's just making me so happy. Like it makes me excited to do chores while I listen to this book and like get into such an imaginative, beautiful space in my head as well. And it's amazing. Okay, once I finish Sailor Moon, I'm gonna pick up The Inferno. That is the goal. If I finish Sailor Moon, watch me never finish it, I will pick up The Inferno. And yeah, if you'd like to see a whole vlog of this, maybe I will start a read along or something for this. I don't know. Just let me know what you'd be interested in. I won't be picking it up at least for a few days, of course, after this video is out too. So don't worry about that. But if that is something you guys would be interested in, I know the Divine Comedy is also quite intimidating for a lot of people, myself included. So yeah i also have the goldfinch here but like i said i don't know if i'm gonna start this this month although i might because it is a hefty it's almost 800 pages long is it really okay never mind i will be starting in this this month for sure i did not know it was 800 pages it looked more like 500 to me but anyway so that is that one we will be picking this up very soon yeah so this is the pick for the dark academics and then i do have a couple more audiobooks so i'm gonna pick up the kiss quotient by helen huang i'm gonna do it um i'm gonna see how i like it and then i will probably i'm thinking i'll probably pick up veins of magic although that's not a sure choice but i kind of want to but i might not but i kind of want to but i might not do you want to pick up veins of magic we shall see, we shall see. And then I also decided to pick up Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. That's the one I'm most excited about, I think. It's been on my TBR for a while, so yeah, that one should be crazy. I hope it's mind blowing. I hope it has an ending that leaves me speechless, but this is everything. Quite the hefty pile. Once again, I honestly don't know if we'll get through them all, but it's just fun to think about what I wanna read next. So I hope you had fun going along with this little book picking journey with me um if there's anything you guys would like to see included in this video for next month definitely let me know because that would be fun too but anyhow thank you so much to squarespace for sponsoring today and yeah let me know what you guys are reading let me know your monthly tbr down below or what you've already read or anything like that and i'll see you very soon on my next video ciao